This content is brought to you by BEC Financial Technologies, developing and operating IT for Danish banks. Please uh, give a warm welcome to Marek Żebielu. Hello. Good morning, everyone. So my name is uh, Marek Żebielu. Thank you for, for the introduction. So I'm the head of um, platform and developer experience domain here at, at BEC. And I would like to warmly welcome you on behalf of, of, of BEC today. So for those of you who don't know um, BEC, we are a 60-year-old fintech. It sounds a little bit strange, but we have a 60 uh, years of experience in serving our member banks in, in, in Denmark. So we provide banking services to 22% of the Danish customers, including uh, even Greenland. So um, it's, it's quite famous in, in, in the recent times. And the reason why I'm here today with, with all of you is um, because we are in the middle of our, I would call it, transformation journey with, um, with the cloud. And as part of that journey, CCOE is, is one of the, I would call it, interesting concept that brings a lot of um, benefits and value. And I will walk you through um, some of my thoughts around that through, throughout um, the presentation. So moving along. Um, for the purpose of, of the presentation and walking you through the journey, I will use the concept called um, Golden Circle, and it's not the Golden Circle you see on the rock concert. Um, is anyone familiar with the Golden Circle concept? All right, so it's a concept um, introduced by uh, Simon Sinek. It concentrates on three fundamental questions. Why we do things, how we do it, and uh, what is... Uh, the outcome of, of that. Why I have used that um, particular framework for the purpose of the presentation? Um, probably everyone, every organization in the world um, knows what they are doing. Probably um, some of you will disagree with that and seen some firms in the past that they, they don't know what they're doing. But when I mean what, it's, it's the outcomes. So um, the services, the products that they deliver, right? Only few of the organizations probably understand how they are doing it. And for me and, and for the author of the concept is, is basically where our um, special competencies sit, why are we special, and what are our competitive um, advantages. And only few organizations um, really understand why they are doing things. So, so what is the, the main purpose of, um, of doing certain, certain actions? So, Let's try to um, align this, this lens into how an effective CCOE could work, and, and I will dive um, straight into why. So do you know any good reasons why we should have a CCOE instead of um, building the cloud just for the cloud purpose? So, so why do we set up a CCOE? Any good reasons? Standardized, okay. Anything else? Agile. Agile, okay. So, for me, the main, I would call it, purpose is accelerate the transformation, right? So, everyone is speaking about the digital transformation and basically um, catching whatever is happening on the IT market and then making us agile, flexible. Um, then, um, ensuring security and, and compliance, so, so increasing our um, ability to be secure and, and resilient. Then we have an aspect of, of cost control, so this is where our friends for, from financial departments come and they are keen to understand how much we're spending on the cloud and how we are measuring and how we're controlling it. Then we're looking for some efficiencies around, um, around the operations. Finally, um, we can't build a, a CCOE um, without driving an innovation and the skills and those two aspects are quite important for me and I will deep dive into those later in, in the second. So, so for, for me, the why is, is the purpose. It's, it's the business objective that we're setting up for, 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 for the CCOE. So moving now to how, how is basically my engine room. Engine room that will allow us to um, deliver on, on the why. 
and and how 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 we do it. Um, you probably know that uh, better than than I do. So we follow basically a, a proven uh, proven patterns, right? Um, we have an adoption framework um, that you probably um, know more than than I do. We're looking into well-architected um, framework, which stands on, on four, four pillars. It's resilience, security, uh, performance, and, and costs. We need to create a, a strategy that will allow us to um, meet our objectives that we set in the part of, of why. We're setting up a governance that will allow us to make sure that whatever um, we do is governed uh, govern correctly and following certain processes, standards, and, and we get to the outcomes that we want to achieve. And finally, um, we can't do it without a team, right? Um, so we need a team, and we also need to train the people in the organization and collaborate with, with our friends and in other teams. And finally, uh, promoting um, automation. So the guys and the girls who, who work with me, they know I'm a big fan of, of automation, but automation for the right reasons, not for the sake of, um, of automation, right? So, so if I would have to summarize the, the how, how is basically the actions that, that we will take um, and the foundation that we will uh, establish in order to achieve our business objective, right? So moving along to, to what? So what is basically my um, outcomes of the activities uh, within how? So if we set our um, strategy and governance and our operating model, this is where we're going to opera operationalize it, right? So I hate that word. Um, what, what does it mean? It is basically enforcing, monitoring, and enhancing all of the procedures, standards, and, and controls that we have, especially from um, the cost perspective, because everyone now is super keen on um, cost control and, and the, the FinOps aspect. Then there is an aspect of architecture and, and engineering, right? So, so here it's, it's basically establishing a certain patterns, reusable assets um, in order to um, make the ability for our developer, developer teams uh, in order to build things resilient, scalable, and in a standardized fashion, as someone mentioned. And finally, it's an also about enabling um, the training. But when I mean training, it's not only giving the ability to, to the people, um, it's more of a being and I would call it like an ambassador of the change and aligning the cloud and DevOps concepts to, to the organization. So CCO, we should also um, step up in the game a little bit and not only introduce the trainings, but be, I would call it, an ambassador of the change. And then finally, um, something that we tend to forget, and I see this also um, in, in other firms, it's giving the people the ability to um, innovate. So creating like an innovative ecosystem where people can prove the new technology related to, to AI, um, open banking, or, or any other um, new aspects that come into, into the game. So this is more or less um, the, the, the overview of, of why, how, and, and what. So what is my personal take on this? Because I think it, it requires some some conclusion or a view from, from my standpoint of view, right? So in terms of why, in, in terms of the purpose of, of the CCOE, so for me, CCOE is more of a fitness trainer than the police officer, right? We should be concentrating on the purpose of the CCOE to help the organization to um, achieve their transformational objective rather than policing only with um, overwhelming procedures and and control points, which are of course um, necessary, but we need to find a proper balance for it. The other aspect is, and I don't see it very often, um, and I think it's quite relevant to look ahead. For me, um, CCOE has an expiry date. So I, I know it sounds a little bit controversial, but when I'm looking into the 
main purpose of, of CCOE, I would expect in the long run that the CCOE will not be needed in the organization anymore at a certain stage because we will be so good in adoption that vast majority of the activities um, and the knowledge is spread across um, the organization. Am I at this point in the organization at the moment? No, not at all. I think we need a few, few more years here in, in the BEC in, to, in order to get to that point. So personally, if I'm looking at how and how to succeed and where people tend to fail, I think the most important from my perspective is starting small. You don't need to master all of the services at the same time. You don't need a huge team, a small fellowship of the ring is, is sufficient to start working with things. Use whatever you have available. We have uh, plenty of support from, from our vendor. We have um, implementation partners who can help out with that. So focus on the right objectives, um, start small, and then scale up. Organization tend to wait and build like a huge CCOE full, full of people. But you can start small, and this is what we did. We introduced a very small um, AI application on, on our cloud. Then we moved into simple client-facing um, application, and now we're moving into more complex implementation of, of, of the data bricks. Secondly, um, automate and accumulate. accumulate. So, so CCO, we should focus on scaling up, of course, but in a right angle, which is automation. So many times uh, I heard from my clients in the previous firm, oh, we need to scale up in CCOE, we need more people, right? We should rather consider where we could put pressure on, on automating things rather than uh, increasing the, the headcount. And the final one, this is something that struck me, I think, um, in a recent month. So make trainings count. I bet my left hand on that each of your companies has all of the fancy learning platforms available for, for each of the employees, right? But probably the vast majority of people is, is, is not using them. So um, giving, I would call it something, to, to the people is, is, is not enough. You need to make it a part of, of the objectives of, of the organization, right? So my friends in the US have, have a saying, um, you can bring the horse to the river, but you're not going to force him to, to drink, right? And then we need some, I would call it, strict objectives in terms of how we want to shape the competencies within, within COE and then start to uh, enforcing that. And finally, um, on what? I think it's prioritizing the experience um, from, from the developers. We tend to work in silos, and I hear comments sometimes, uh, not, not in BEC, but when I'm speaking with, with, with people um, that I used to work with, oh, ah, yeah, those, clouds, those cloud guys are sitting in an ivory tower, and they're doing their own stuff, and they're not working with us in, in order to bring the valid ideas that will basically help us to, to, to work, right? So, this connection is sometimes a problem, and we should avoid this as much as possible. And finally, so this is something that I'm trying to bring into the game here at BEC, is, is fueling the innovation. People tend to um, get frustrated if they do only the mundane work, and then we need to find some time in, in order to innovate. So as part of BC, we have the innovation um, days, so teams can take some part of time in order to, to, to innovate. But it's also creating an ecosystem for, for the other teams to, to play around um, within the cloud with the new technologies. So, so to conclude, um, I leave you with a, with a quote from Simon Sinek. I think technology tools and processes, they are extremely important, right? The controls as well. What I think the more important in order to succeed with, with CCOE is, is finding the right purpose within, within your organization. So thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. OK, so do we have any questions in the room? Yes, we do have a question. So please let me join with any microphone. Uh, setting up a center of excellence is just one thing. How to fight the resistance of the organization so they do not follow? So, 
I think it's setting up the proper reasons and convincing the stakeholders, right? So this is exactly the, the quote. So you will not get the buy-in from your senior stakeholders if they don't understand why um, we're, we're trying to do. I will explain. Okay. Displaying the slogan is one thing, mm -hmm. how to do it, how to make sure that the organization follows. So displaying the slogan is just not enough. Mm -hmm. You must have a sponsor in board. So securing the, the, first of all, you need the senior stakeholders um, buy-in, right? So, so you need to find someone in the senior leadership who, who will basically your, your best friend um, going forward. But I think that's not the angle of the question, right? You're saying how to implement it later on, right? It's just simply that the organization is following that text, right? Which is quite simple, but uh, we have a sponsor. Mm-hmm. So it's the empowerment that the CCO needs. So once you're, once you're setting it up, they need to have a, I would call it, um, formal empowerment in order, in order to drive this change. And it sounds easy, I know, but there is plenty of conflicting priorities in the organization probably, right? So people will say that we don't have time um, to do this. We have um, customer-facing issues, customer-facing implementations. So, so I think it's, it's proper empowerment and the prioritization of, of the activities. Each organization tends to do it um, differently in terms of, of prioritization. So we have a like, large um, product organization that is setting the priorities on the organization level. So I would say first one is the, the senior leadership buy-in, right? Secondly is the empowerment and the final is the, the prioritization. And that's about all the time that we have for the Q&A session right now. So if you have any other questions, please join us during the, maybe the coffee break that we'll have after the next presentation. But uh, thank you so much, Marek, for joining us for this power speech to start our day. And right now we are presenting our speaker with the um, award. Thank you so much.